Nobody cared who I was until I... <laughs> it's just a stupid start. So, here we are. We are looking at a half-assed, finished roof on a Lincoln Continental. Now, what's very fascinating about this, other than you being able to watch my face currently, like, I, it's hard because I can see myself right now, but I've got that little stupid postage stamp, but whatever. So, looking at the car, what you see is a half-finished Lincoln. Now, what you're noticing is my job as a, an entertainer here, if for some reason you guys find this stuff entertaining, is not um, to show you exactly the right way to do this because I don't know. I'm not an expert. I'm not showing you Bob Vila's way to restore a car like this. What I am showing you is how a guy who does so many things and picks up so many projects and can't finish all of them, how he does his work. So that's what you're looking at here. Now, what you're seeing right here is actually the um, primed, etched um, side of the car. This side I actually spent a hell of a lot more time on and uh, consequently got it all the way down to the bare metal. So you're seeing kind of where it ends. You see, you know, I, my number one focus was to protect the metal because I don't think, I don't think, oh, hey, that works. I don't think that this is actually going to uh, be painted. My goal isn't to paint this. My goal is to protect it because I think I'm going to vinyl over. Originally, this whole rear of the vehicle uh, was vinyl, you know, the whole top, sorry. And uh, there were pieces of trim, like all through here, that buckled it all in. So, what you're looking at currently, my current status of the project, is that that half is currently being etched. Get my face out of the way. By that little bottle right there. That's basically, it's called navel jelly. And I've used it for years for shitty small end projects. But what it basically is, is it's phosphoric acid in a jelly format. So it sticks to the metal. Uh, what, you, what you're going to see is it's frosting over. And that's not frost, it's not cold. But what, what it's doing right now is it's combining with the metal, doing some magic shit, kind of like the uh, Insane Clown Posse's, you know, magnets, how the fuck do they work? This stuff's doing some magic to the metal and uh, converting the rust into a different material. The basic science behind this, because I do appreciate understanding what's going on, is rust is aluminum, <laughs> aluminum, oh my god, <laughs> don't ever listen to me. It's um, iron oxide, so it's oxidized metal. Now, what that means is that there's oxygen found in the metal, and oxygen comes from you know water, air, all that sort of crazy shit, and it turns into that brownish, you know, reddish, brownish stuff that you see on the car. Oddly enough, it kind of protect, it kind of starts protecting itself. Now it'll keep rusting and continuing through, but in some cases, like aluminum, aluminum oxide will actually protect the aluminum underneath it. So it becomes a kind of a barrier. So not every metal is the same, but in this case, um, iron oxide is bad. So what I'm doing is actually using, essentially, using that sort of acid in that case, it's phosphoric acid, using various acids to uh, etch the metal. And so what it is doing is it is actually removing the oxide. Uh, I don't know the exact, I'm not even, I'm, this isn't a science show, this isn't exact, but you can use any sort of acid uh, to turn rust in, into uh, kind of salvageable metal. The problem is, not they, they don't all do the same thing. So for example, muriatic acid, which is also known as hydrochloric acid, uh, we'll etch this, but then it will actually weaken the metal often. Again, you know, I'm not a scientist. I don't know every situation, but it's not ideal to use um, hydrochloric acid to etch metal with rust. Perfect reason why I know that is because down here, look at, look at how much I've trashed my, my whole garage. This is just for this damn car. Um, a quick side note, look at how close, hey, focus, look at how close this Damn vehicle, this monster is on both ends of the garage. I literally have to push the car back towards me to get it to, uh, to um, you know, actually open the garage door. But when I was working on the gas tank, which is hidden, obviously, under there, um, I had the same issues. I was trying to remove the rust from the car. So, similar situation, except this time, um, it's surface rust. It's, I can scrape it. I can agitate it. Uh, which I've done, you'll see also over there, see that little guy? That is the best tool 
for removing rust off of a situation like this. So I got all the real heavy, nasty shit off, and then I'm doing the treatment to kind of uh, protect the metal. Now, so again, you guys, this isn't this isn't a uh, show. This isn't some sort of like um, you know high end whatever gre grease monkey or whatever the high end big bigger budget things are. So I'm using you know what products that we would use you know from. AutoZone and all those sort of places that uh, majority of you guys that actually know more than me are going to be like, Rob, bro, bro, come on. So I'm using this. Now, again, this is two things in here. So the, again, this, the, the chemistry behind this is not just to prime it, which is what it looks like. Primed it, you're protecting it, but you're not necessarily adhering to the metal because it needs to be etched. So the correct process, I would say, and you know, again, some of my painter friends um, and body shop working friends, please, you know, chime in in the comments. But the, the goal is to etch it first. Your goal is to you know protect and etch. Oh, I'm tripping on shit. The goal is to protect and etch it first. So that product kind of does both. Uh, it's you know, it's like, hey, I'm gonna do a little bit of both and do it half ass. Uh, but you'll see again, I'm getting the surface ready. Um, I'm gonna clean up this area and uh, finally take the shit off of the rest of that car and call her a, a day. So my goal tonight, the rest of this evening, is going to be, um, you know, finishing up some sanding. There's some rough areas over on that side, but finishing up some sanding and uh, getting the rest of this all primed and etched. So nice little update for all the craziness that's going on in my life. And uh, I'll have a huge video. I, I keep promising, but I'm not promising you anything right now. It's just that I have a shit ton of footage for the Diablo being uh, expel wrapped. It's just taking a long time because I got to do it after hours. So uh, until then, I will catch up with you all very soon.